Hello everybody, Vestmore here, and today we're talking about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This time we're going to be taking a look at some of the more advanced concepts and mechanics that are featured within the game. We've already looked at some beginner and intermediate concepts here on the channel, so if you haven't already seen those videos, be sure to check them out. Anywho, getting right to it, allow me to welcome you to the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Workshop. If you enjoy this or find it helpful, then please leave your feedback in the form of a like or a comment down below, and be sure to let us know what you would like to see in future episodes. Also, we are still running the giveaway for a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Limited Edition Nintendo Switch. If you're watching on the day the video released, that gives you only 5 more days to get involved, so be sure to click the link in the description box down below for your chance to win. So, let's begin. Jab locking is a technique that allows you to lock your opponent in place on the ground for a short amount of time after they fail to tech. If you don't know what a tech is, I'll quickly give you a refresher. When you are launched by an attack, you will hit the ground assuming you aren't launched off stage. However, if you press the shield button before you hit the ground, instead of bouncing off of the ground, you will catch yourself and immediately stand up. This is known as a tech. Now, if your opponent misses their tech, you can punish them using jab locking. In order to do so, you have to hit them with a low knockback attack as they hit the ground. For most characters, this is usually their jab attack, as it's fast and has low knockback, hence the name jab locking. However, there are other moves that fit this criteria, for example Mario and Fox's neutral airs. When you hit them, it resets the bounce animation which locks them in place. You can only do this a maximum of two times before your opponent gets back up. However, this gives you enough time to input a smash attack. This is incredibly useful, as it guarantees a ton of damage on your opponent or even a kill at higher percents. The one downside to this technique is that it requires your opponent to fail their tech, which most adept players rarely do. However, it's still good to know, as it gives you a massive advantage over your opponent if you can pull it off. <laughs> Moving on from there, we have fast fall aerials. When using aerial attacks against grounded opponents, it can be a good idea to utilize fast falling for a number of reasons. Fast falling after performing a rising short hop aerial, that's when you hit both jump and attack at the same time, allows you to hit the ground quicker, allowing you to chain attacks together much faster since hitting the ground cancels the rest of the aerial attack animation. In order to pull this off, you have to hit down on the control stick at the apex of your jump. You can see what I mean in this example with Lucina. Fast falling at the apex of my rising short hop aerial allows me to chain together multiple neutral airs into a combo, whereas without fast falling, this would be impossible. This can also be used as a way to approach opponents on characters that have aerials with lingering hitboxes, such as Lucina and Mario's neutral air. Fast falling in this manner makes it much harder for your opponent to defend against your attack, as you are moving much faster than if you were falling at a regular speed. Be sure to experiment with your favourite character's aerials and see which ones work best for you. Next up is ledge trumping. If your opponent is holding onto the ledge, you can force them off of it by grabbing the ledge yourself. This is known as ledge trumping, and it can be an extremely useful edge guarding tool. If you grab the ledge directly after your opponent does, you are able to perform a punish as they are locked in the ledge trump animation. If you leave it too late to grab the ledge, your opponent will be able to escape this punish. If your opponent doesn't take damage after you ledge trump them, and they haven't yet landed back on stage, when they re-grab the ledge, they won't have their invincibility, leaving them open to attack. However, if they do take damage, they will regain their invincibility upon re-grabbing the ledge. One nifty trick you can perform is the instant ledge grab. This allows you to grab the ledge almost instantly from the safety of the stage. In order to do this, you must dash off stage, then immediately rotate the control stick in a half circle motion opposite to the way you dashed. If done correctly, you will immediately grab the ledge. Next up is a concept known as stale moves. When you hit your opponent with an attack, the game takes note of that attack and puts it into an invisible list. It does this for the last 9 moves you've hit with, with the 10th move landed at any given time cycling the first move on the list out. This is critical, because the next time you hit with a move that is on this list, the damage and knockback is reduced slightly. This affects stacks, so using the same move 9 times in a row will drastically reduce the damage output of the move. This is called staling, and it encourages you to mix up your gameplay in order to do the most damage possible. Most characters have approximately 26 damage dealing actions they can take, so unless you spam the same move, this is usually not something you need to worry about. You can unstale a move by using 9 different moves afterward, which would knock it off of the stale list. It is important to note that you have to hit with the move in order for it to be added to the stale moves list. 
If it doesn't connect with anything, its efficacy won't be lowered. That said, if you hit an opponent's shield or a throwable projectile, your move will be added to the list and become weaker. Next up is the concept of buffering. Buffering has been in Super Smash Bros since Brawl, however, it has been completely revamped for Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Essentially, buffering allows you to enter inputs in advance, and have them come out in the shortest amount of time possible. In Ultimate, the window for buffering inputs is the previous action's frames. For instance, when I perform a forward tilt, I have until the attack is finished to hold down the inputs for my next attack, in this case, a forward smash. If done correctly, the very moment my forward tilt ends, I will begin charging my forward smash. Buffering is an incredibly valuable tool, as it allows you to pull off rapid combos much easier, as well as react to things as fast as possible. One interesting thing of note is that you can buffer short hop aerials by inputting jump, attack, and a direction. Finally, we have out of shield options. When you shield an opponent's attack, you undergo something known as shield stun. This prevents you from acting for a short period of time, and in ultimate, shield stun has been increased on many moves, making it harder to punish opponents that attack into your shield. This rewards players who learn how to parry consistently, as it is a much better option most of the time. However, when opponents do attack into your shield, you have several options available to you, and each one can be buffered during shield stun. The first is up smash. You can up smash directly out of shield by inputting up an attack while holding shield. From my testing, it seems that, if buffered, up smash begins charging as soon as shield stun ends, as opposed to having forced frames added on like grabs, but we'll get to that shortly. Up smash is a good choice when your opponent uses a move with lots of lag on your shield, such as a dash attack, due to the fact that smash attacks are usually quite slow to start. This can result in a kill at high percent. Your next option is a grab. You can grab out of shield by pressing attack while your shield is up. Again, this is a good option to use if your opponent uses a very unsafe move on shield. One thing to note, grabs have the caveat of forcing you to hold shield for an additional 4 frames before your grab starts up, which can leave you open to being punished if your opponent recovers from their ending lag before you grab them. This makes grabbing from shield a little bit more risky. Next up is jumping and aerial attacks. You can perform these by holding either jump in order to jump, or attack and jump, as well as a direction on the control stick in order to perform your various aerial attacks. Similarly to up smash, these options do not suffer the same caveat as grabbing, so they come out faster, but more importantly, some aerials are incredibly fast, making aerial out of shield the fastest option there is. And that will conclude the Advanced Smash Workshop. If you liked this video, be sure to check out the other guides on our channel, and as always, be sure to stick around for more Super Smash Bros. Ultimate content. This is Vest, signing off. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, if you want to grab some sweet Arax Gaming merch, you can head over to the Endgame store right now. That's linked down below. And you can pick up either the Arax Gaming festive jumper or sweater. And yes, we might be past Christmas, but it's an awesome jumper. So if you want to grab one, they are super limited. There were only 100 of them made, but there are still a few left. So you can pick those up if you want. Plus, we have the limited Yeet pin from 269's live stream. If you want to grab that, the awesome mascot, you get that as a pin and a sticker. So both of those are available to purchase if you guys want to pick them up. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to stay tuned, don't forget to stay subscribed, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads, and you can check out some of the more recent videos linked right here.